Jaya Jaya, a quick video here on the master or, or guru disciple uh, frequency or partnership that you might encounter if you are on your spiritual journey. Um, this is a very, very sacred transmission. It's the mentoring of your being through uh, another being who might be more advanced and has the possibility to influence and direct and inspire you, give you shortcuts, uh, allows you not to be uh, trapped in, uh, in patterns that might be yeah, holding you back. So, Guru Disciple, you know, this is the way um, a lot of the spiritual traditions have been functioning in the past, even if it's not official, you know, in the, in the mainstream, uh, in Christianity or in uh, Islam, you will have uh, teachers as well, people who are transmitting sacred teachings, and very often those teachings are going to be esoteric teachings, it means they, are, they will be on the ground, they are not exposed to the public, but they are like mystery schools and secret schools, and um, within that context, then um, the, the teachers, the gurus, the masters are going to take students and become mentors and invest themselves into helping them uh, raise their frequency and uh, awaken their uh, spiritual reality. So the, the thing that I want to bring uh, up here is why is it that sometimes a master or a teacher will require from you to be exclusive with a certain teaching, with their teaching, right? Which the, this master or this specific teacher will say things like, uh, if you learn from me, I want you to be completely loyal to this teaching and be dedicated to this path. And the moment you start deviating and going into other pathways, then that might dis dilute your, your energy and your attention, eventually lose track with the connection or the focus that you might have with that specific teacher. So there are lots of situations in life or lots of aspects of life where this is being practiced. For instance, in relationships, right? You will have exclusive relationships. You will have uh, a couple that is being formed where two partners decide to, to focus on each other. The moment they might, uh, you know, for instance, fall in love with somebody else or there might be a cheating episode or there might be just an open relationship, then the, the integrity of the container might be compromised. And uh, this happens also within the field of business, for instance, right? If you work for a company, well, you cannot work for another company at the same time, most of the times. It's simply a matter of time and energy. And uh, when it comes to uh, spiritual development and spiritual training, the same kind of thing can apply. It's like you only have so much energy to invest and so much time, and uh, you are going to progress way, way faster when you are fully dedicated along one pathway. And that doesn't mean that you cannot, you know, shop around and explore and try and play with different 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 techniques and different sources. But you will notice that at a certain point the, the narrowing of your attention and really focus uh, uh, on one specific stream will really help you dive deeper and deeper into that. You know if you take the parallel again when it comes to relationships and, and your coupling experience well, if you have been in relationships and if you have been, for instance, married, you know that the, the, the deepening of the connection that you can have with somebody will go deeper and deeper when there is loyalty and exclusivity that is being created. And that doesn't mean that other models are not appropriate or possible. Of course, we can go deeper, deep as well within the context of polyamory or uh, open relationships, but you, if you have been exposed to that, you know as well that there is something really magical that happens when there is a full commitment and full dedication towards another human being. And so the same happens when there's a transmission from a certain master. This master is going to invest himself or herself into you in ways that it's almost like he or she takes karmic responsibility for, for your evolution. And so this is, requires you to be extremely responsive and extremely present to that relationship as well, you know, because it's a, it's a commitment on both, both sides. And so if, um, you know, that teacher, that guru might have the choice between um, inviting students, a student who is, you know, very 
dissipated and, and spread over and has his or her attention in different fields, or somebody who is n completely 100% focused, well, obviously the, the, the results or the impact and the, the, the feeling of validation that that teacher is going to receive is going to be way, way higher when uh, that student is 100% completely focused on those uh, teachings. It makes sense, right? This is not rocket science. It's, it, makes, it makes sense from that place. Um, so nowadays within the, the spiritual field, within the New Age movement and uh, within the spiritual community, most of the times um, there is going to be just a field, you know, we are here right now evolving. Um, only a fraction of people will really have a guru or a focus with a teacher that they receive or accept as their spiritual guide, as their source of light or as their guru. So the model of guru disciple is not that much uh, being applied in the West anymore. Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe 20-30% of spiritual seekers still have that model and that relationship in mind. Uh, but uh, if you are within that field, that's something that you might be encountering, you know, the, the need to narrow your attention and really focus on just one teaching. And what I'm saying here is just an idea, you know, it's not something that you have to do. I'm just giving you a little bit the context, what you understand, why this exclusiveness sometimes is required to go deeper. It's a little bit like if you try to climb the Mount Everest and you have the North Face and the South Face, you know, you are on the North Face, you have a certain set of techniques that you are going to use to get to the summit. Uh, you cannot change halfway and decide to go via the South, right? It's like you are engaged into this pathway and very often the, the, the coherence of the path that is being given to you for you to reach uh, profound states of awakening and samadhi and enlightenment uh, require you to be to to uh, focusing your mind on precisely that these techniques you know imagine for instance that you're practicing zen for instance you will go to a zen monastery you will have zen master you will have people who have been uh, teaching these systems for hundreds of years and and um, they are going to be creating a field or a resonance field or a system that is coherent and so when you are within that system those are the techniques that you are going to embrace and practice if suddenly you start fully completely deviating and bringing elements that are you know not integrated or included within that field then um, of course it's going to confuse um, the energetics and uh, maybe sidetrack you and uh, not allow you to um, to have the impact and the results that you would like to have when you are engaging in your spiritual training and evolution. Hope that makes sense. Can you hear the crickets? The moon was beautiful a little bit earlier here. Um, the new moon uh, rising, I mean, going down with Venus. Right, right next to it, a very magical moment. Send you lots of love from the island of Bali. <laughs>